How's it going guys? Crosslux here with another devotional video. Today we'll be looking at Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Red and Blue Rescue Teams. I'll finish my Let's Play of Red Rescue Team eventually. So, what is there to find in a roguelike Pokemon game that can be related to Christianity? Well, let's find out by taking a look at the main characters of the game, you, your partner, and the rest of your rescue team. To make things easier for me, and for those of you who have watched my Let's Play of Red Rescue Team, I may be referring to the player character as Skipper, the partner as Lizzie, and the rescue team as a whole as Operation Lightspeed Rescue. The rescue team is made up of a bunch of different Pokemon that you recruit over the course of the game. In my case, Skipper and Lizzie were the founders, but they quickly gained valuable members like Tesla the Magneton, Grim the Absol, Grunge the Bayonet, Pokey the Beedrill, and many more. So what's so important about Operation Lightspeed Rescue having such a wide variety of Pokemon? Well, I'm glad you asked. The many different missions to complete and dungeons to explore are varied. Different types and strategies are required for tackling each one. Take the Sinister Woods, for example. It's filled with bug and grass types, so fire and flying type recruits will be especially helpful, while water types will be at a significant disadvantage. Then take the Grand Sea. It's an underwater dungeon, so it's filled with water types, meaning that you'll want to leave your fire, ground, and rock types at home. Instead, grass and electric type members will get you through it. What I'm saying is, as Operation Lightspeed Rescue grows, it's better able to handle situations and overcome obstacles. And as a rescue team, Lightspeed wants to be able to protect as many Pokemon as they can. For fellow Christians out there, does this sound familiar? I for one see parallels between the rescue team and the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 12 through 27 We get an idea of what it means to be the church. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all of its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts that we think are less honorable we treat with special honor, and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. I know it's a mouthful, but it was a jam-packed verse that's all very applicable here. The Christian church is made up of so many different types of people who each have strengths and weaknesses like the individual members of Operation Lightspeed Rescue. The reason why the church is so effective is because 1. God rocks, and 2. He makes use of many different types of people. Some people don't come to Christ because of some glorious religious or emotional experience. Instead, they may have come to the logical conclusion that God exists and He's perfectly good. On the flip side, some people respond better to emotions and personal experiences. God uses his children like tools sometimes. As he's tending his garden, he equips a hoe and tills the ground. Then he picks up a shovel and digs a hole, plop in the seeds, and then follow up with a watering can. I'm sure you all can get the picture. Relating this back to the Let's Play, 
Operation Lightspeed did not save the world because they were inherently awesome. They did it because of all the help they received from their friends along the way. Skipper nearly gave up hope several times throughout the story, because he was depressed and afraid that he had caused all the problems of the world. During those times, Lizzie was always there. She always believed in him and supported him every step of the way. Likewise, Lizzie was supported by Skipper from day one. It was the meeting between Skipper and Lizzie that drove her to want to go through with her dream of starting a rescue team in the first place. Tesla could float, and it was because of his intervention that Operation Lightspeed Rescue could save Diglett, one of their first and most important missions. Grimm guided Skipper and Lizzie through the winding paths of the frosty forest when they were on their last legs. Proverbs 27 verse 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. So as you can see, it's important that we embrace as many different types of people as we can. Don't be discouraged if you can't do the things that others can do. I know that when I was younger, I always hated that I wasn't coordinated enough or strong enough for sports. I didn't really like sports that much, to be honest. I think I was just jealous because I wanted to be great at everything. But as I grew, I learned that I don't have to be great at everything. I can rely on a mechanic to fix my car or a doctor to help me recover. Meanwhile, I can focus on video editing and programming. The point I'm trying to make is we all have a role to play. Only I can do my role and only you can do your role. So don't sweat it if you can't do something as well as someone else. Just try to find what you enjoy and what you're good at and focus on that. Because odds are that person that you look up to can't do some of the things that you can. It's like they say, the grass is greener on the other side. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be competitive or try to become better at things that you're not naturally good at. With God, all things are possible. So even if you're not good at something, if God wants you to do that thing, then he will prepare and strengthen you for that. The biggest strength of the church is its head, Jesus himself. But the next biggest strength, I would argue, is its diversity. So many different personalities and experiences help bring in people. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Since we are the ambassadors of Christ, we represent him on this earth. The church has a huge job to complete, way bigger than any of the dungeons that I'm stuck on in Red Rescue Team. Jesus tasked us with the Great Commission. We see this in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. We can't do it by ourselves. We must rely on God and each other to make up for where we are lacking. I love you guys. Have a blessed day, and I will see you in the next one.